This is the second video in a series on the Royal Geographical Society and its sponsorship of many of the greatest 19th and 20th century expeditions. These included expeditions to discover the source of the Nile, to be the first to climb Mount Everest, to fill in blank spots on maps of places throughout Africa, Antarctica, South America, to understand more about India and Central Asia, to fill an intense curiosity of what might be out there that was undiscovered, wanting to know the sciences, particularly the geology, flora, fauna, climate, and other natural phenomena, was a motivator for visiting these distant lands. Anthropology and ethnography were interest in becoming aware of new cultures, how they lived, and their languages. There was also national pride on the line, fueled in part by a colonization mentality. The names that received sponsorship are some of the most prominent names of exploration, such as Richard F. Burton, Charles Darwin, David Livingstone, Edmund Hillary, Ernest Shackleton, Percy Fawcett, Henry Stanley, Alfred Wallace, Robert Scott, and many other very well-known explorers. Many of these have been knighted by the United Kingdom. I suspect the 19th, 20th century United Kingdom was a time of one of the greatest, if not the greatest period, in having a fascination with geography and discovery. I always enjoy looking at why such strong curiosities develop. It should be remembered that Europe several hundred years before this seemed to have no interest in sciences, knowledge, and geography. This was the Dark Ages when European society free fell in the standard of living and understanding of the world. I have covered why in earlier episodes, and in the future will likely do an episode specifically on the Dark Ages. If we travel back to the year 1050, Europe had almost no understanding of the world. The Middle East, Northern Africa, China, and India were an enigma to them, and other than that, no other parts of the world were known. The only reason most of Europe even knew about the Middle East, Northern Africa, China, and India was because of trade goods. It was known that silk came from China, salt and gold came from Mali, and so on. Europe encouraged peasants to murder non-Catholic Christians, Jews, Muslims, and others, then to take over the Holy Lands. This was known as the Crusades, and those going on the Crusades were known as Crusaders. Eight Crusades were organized between the years 1095 and 1291, including the absurdity of a children's crusade in 1212. The Crusades would continue for another 400 years beyond this, until around the year 1700, Millions lost their lives during the Crusades. Despite the craziness of the Crusades, I cannot help but believe that they ignited a spark and awakened a curiosity of Europe. Travel has a way of doing that, and many of the Crusaders would walk a few thousand miles or several thousand kilometers on their way to Jerusalem. The Venetian Republic was the great European trader during the Dark Ages and beyond. In the 13th century, Venetians Niccolo and Mafio Polo made a trip to see Kublai Khan, the Mongol emperor of China. They would make a return trip with Niccolo's son, Marco. Marco later, while in jail after the trip, dictated his story of his travels and the book the Travels of Marco Polo was published around the year 1300 and became quite famous. I can imagine this too added to Europe's geographical curiosity. Later that century, Francisco Petrarca would lead the humanist movement that was interested in human potential. The humanist movement led to the Renaissance, which eventually became a continent-wide effort to understand the world as ancient Greeks and Romans had. Despite the explosion of thought, the Renaissance, ancient Greece and ancient Rome were like most of history in that it was very dangerous 
to be a profound thinker. Powerful and very controlling organizations and individuals could not be questioned. The questioning could very well result in a death sentence. The age of discovery, fueled mostly by greed of Spain and Portugal, searched for gold and riches by sailing to faraway lands and taking it from the locals. The Dutch, English, and French would later do the same. In a small period of time, in the 15th and 16th centuries, the outline of the continents became known by Europeans after having virtually no idea. The Age of Discovery had created this. There, in a sense, had been a domino effect thinking from the Crusades, the travels of Marco Polo, the humanist movement, the Renaissance, and the Age of Discovery. The Age of Science came next in the 16th, 17th centuries and would also add to enhanced thinking, but one could still not freely express oneself. This changed significantly during Europe's Age of Reason in the 17th and 18th centuries. I covered this in episode 60 and have the link below. The writings and influence of English and French philosophers would single-handedly change an individual's ability to express ideas without fear of harsh or death sentencing. When we speak of our rights, it is these individuals who change this, with most of their writings being in the mid-18th century. This includes David Hume, John Locke, Montesquieu, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, and Voltaire. Exploration then changed. Individuals were allowed to try to better understand the world without it being solely for the benefit of their country or the limitations the religious structures placed on them. Along with this new passion of discovery came new types of organizations, particularly in the UK. The Africa Association was formed in 1788. Its intention was to find the legendary city of gold, or Timbuktu. The founders thought it was a crime and how little was known about the interior of Africa and that during the times of ancient Greece or Rome, much more was known about Africa, despite 2,200 years having passed. The Raleigh Club was formed in 1826 and would meet at a London tavern. Those attending were world explorers and would exchange tales of their travels and try foods of faraway places. The Palestine Association was formed in 1805 for better understanding knowledge of Palestine. These three clubs would be absorbed into the Royal Geographical Society, or RGS. The Royal Geographical Society was founded in 1830 in London for the purpose to advance geographical sciences. RGS continues to this day to pursue its mission. It received its royal charter from Queen Victoria in 1859. The organization has sponsored thousands and thousands of expeditions and continues to do so even today. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you enjoyed the content, please let others know and join me as I look at the individual expeditions that were sponsored by the Royal Geographical Society. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next episode.